The Small Business Show, episode 321 for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we small business every single week. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I don't know about you, Dave, but I small business every single day. I, you know, as I said, <laughs> as I said that, I was. <laughs> we talk about it once a week when yes. we meet up for this this fun and interesting show. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a good thing to small business every day. Yep, it it, it is, uh, and and it is a uh, you know it's it's more like an every hour kind of thing. It's not even a once a day thing. So um, it's yeah, how, it's how we do it. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I it's went. I, we're gonna we're gonna talk about. ADHD uh, today uh, in a little bit here. Of course, we're not doctors and uh, and and certainly not professionals in that environment. We're barely professionals. No, we have a lot to say about it as it relates to small business and success, or at least to us and small to business us. and yeah, success. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. The first thing I want to do though is I went and I you know use air quotes to South by Southwest last week. It was all online. Uh, as it was last year, although last year was, you know, online at the last minute, uh, this year was online and planned. Uh, and there was one session I, and I went to it because, uh, because of my interest in music. So it was a session with John Platt, the chairman and CEO of Sony music publishing and Carol King, the singer songwriter. So yeah, oh, I feel okay. the earth move yeah. under my right. That's that's <laughs> Carol song. King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the name of the session was um, inclusive leadership, or it was notes on inclusive leadership. And the idea behind the session was okay. Here are these people, and I, I, it, it's uh, potentially obvious from what I said that Carol King is a woman. Uh, it is not at all obvious from what I've said because this is an audio show that John Platt is a black man. And he, the, it, the idea was to get the two of them together to talk about their struggles in a predominantly white man dominated, white male dominated, you know, industry. And so, okay, okay cool. And, um, and I, I really attended because I, I thought Carol King would have some excellent stories to tell. I didn't know anything about John Platt going into this and, uh, you know, there's, I, I'm always interested in hearing musicians stories, right? Sure. Carol King was great. Um, Except, I mean, she came across exactly like she described herself, which is as a nice Jewish grandmother. Uh, when, when, and she came up in the seventies, like that's when, you know, she was a, a star and that's when she had her, her first rounds with success. That was a time certainly when the music industry was even more dominated by, by guys than, than women. And, right. and yet you know, her comments on all of that were, you know, I never really experienced any, um, any issues. I just, you know, it's a hard business to be in no matter who you are. And so we just wrote our songs and, and pushed forward and, and that's how it was. And while it warms my heart to know that at least as she experienced it, she didn't feel that she was repressed or sidelined or marginalized or anything like that. It didn't really yeah, serve yeah, it, it didn't serve, really, maybe didn't serve the conversation, but good for her for but, sharing her experience. Right. For, absolutely. Like, yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Cool. However, the, the surprise here was, was John Platt, uh, who uh, said that, you know, he very much got into rock and roll at an early age. And when he got into the music business, he, uh, he, you know, had this experience that people who looked like him were not expected to have like he knew all about rock and roll and you know the histories of it and and all the bands and like he was into rock and roll you know and 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 that was especially then that was odd um and so he had to push a little bit and and push past people's expectations of you know what they thought he would be bringing to the table but it was really interesting he said a few things that really hit home for me he said um when I see a problem, I just see that as something I'm supposed to work around. And what a powerful thing. I mean, it, nice. it definitely resonates with me, you, yeah, you know, me and him for, for different reasons, but also some of the same reasons. Like any, you know, in business, you're just yeah. going to run into problems. 
That's right. It's not a barrier that that's going to stop you. You're you're going to just figure out how to work around it, whatever it may be. Whatever it is. And and he followed that up by saying special things are supposed to be hard. And I really mm-hmm. kind of liked that. You know, and he said um he said when things are hard, you probably need to lean into that. That's his advice that he gives to folks because he says that's where the magic happens. And and then he said if you love it that much, so pick something that you're truly interested in. And if you love it that much, it's not really that hard at the end of the day. And I, yeah. I, yeah. And it was just, it, these like were, it. yeah, these were good things. The, the, the other thing, well, there were two other real topics that he, that he hit that, that really resonated with me. He said it, and this is one I need to learn. Uh, he said at one point he was in, uh, he started as an A&R guy, which is the, the role uh, that goes out and finds new artists and then shepherds them through the signing onto a label process. It's very different today than it would have been, you know, even 20 years ago, but, but you know, it's a very solo job. They're going out to clubs, they're sussing out bands and then trying to find the one that they think they can make into a hit act or at least a, you know, a hit song or something like that. Right. So he's doing his thing. And about a year in, his boss came to him and gave him a, a sizable raise. And he said, well, thanks, but, you know, wh- why? <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, because you're figuring it out. And he said, well, what do you mean? He's like, I haven't yeah, really, awesome. I haven't signed a hit act yet. You know, like that, that hasn't happened. And he's like, no, 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 no. He said, you're bringing people along with you. You're realizing, or maybe not, but he says, let me tell you. That by being inclusive and bringing people along with you, you're actually increasing your value to me because you're now running a team without realizing you're running a team. And that makes you valuable. And that was a really interesting thing for me as a, you know, uh, an active but wanting to be recovering entrepreneur, I guess, uh, or, or solopreneur, you know, I, we, sure. we, we all have those moments when you start a business often, it, you either have a partner or you have a lot of money to hire employees or you do it all yourself. And for most of us, it's the last one, right? And so you have to do everything and it's a hard shift. We've talked about it a lot. Getting into a, a vibe where you realize it's better to have other people around you, but that actually it increases the value of your business and it increases your value too. So that was a that was an great. that was an interesting little insight. And yeah, uh, kudos to to both of them for highlighting, uh, you know, especially you know John for highlighting how how he succeeded and how he got through those barriers instead of. You know, I think some folks kind of embrace that some things that in a different way. Yeah. So I love to hear the conversation was like, yeah, this was there, but you know, it was one more thing for me to figure out and I got through it and became a success because those role models and those stories, uh, that, and the more people you share that with, then, then more success we're going to have for other folks like that, which is awesome. That's exactly right. Yeah. He said, he said one last thing, which really was interesting. He came from um from a, pr- a a different label that was the number one label and they brought him on to Sony and they are not or at least when they brought him on they weren't the number one label and he said to them you know um being the best is fine but even better than that is the journey to being the best and he's like we're on that journey together that's cool that's going to be a whole lot more fun than it will be when we just realize we're the best. I mean, that's fine. Like that's a great thing to push towards, but he said the journey of getting there to best is even better. And if that's not inspiring to you, I don't know what it is. But yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds like a good, good session. It was, it was good. Yeah. It was not at all what I expected to get out of it, but um, equally or perhaps even more valuable than what I expected, which was great. So yeah, it was good. Very cool. Yeah, good man. stuff. Good stuff. So the topic I want to talk about today, uh, you know, I grew up as an ADHD kid. There's, you know, I'm, my son has, has it. And so I, I started to think about it in a, as we've identified kind of the secrets to our success, if you will, over the years as small business owners, many of the things that we've done have fall into, fall into this kind of categorization of, uh, 
somebody that has a ADHD. So I want to explore that a little bit today and talk about and, and share my take on this, on yeah. this whole concept. So I have yeah. a question for that, that I think both of us should answer uh, as we start here. Have you ever been diagnosed? And I, I, I hate to do this publicly, yeah. but, but I want to ask this Doesn't question. Matter. I feel like yeah. it's good for our listeners. Have you ever been officially diagnosed with ADHD? No, but okay. when my son was, I was like, wow, everything yeah. you're saying, I, that's, I've got this. And I had these same struggles when he got into sure. later, you know, school and different things that, that he's gone through and overcome. I, I, I shared that experience, uh, you know, when I was a kid as well. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It, it, I just wanted to ask because we, we aren't doctors. And so we, no. we are sharing our experiences. I just wanted to yes. couch that. I am in the same yeah. boat as you. People our age, ADHD was not a common, I don't even know if it was, was a diagnosis so. back then. I was diagnosed as hyperactive, which yeah, is that, probably right. the precursor to this, yeah. uh, it, you know, but, but I, but I never have been diagnosed as ADHD. I also haven't gone and sought out a diagnosis by the time right. I realized it was a thing. I'd already sort of figured out how to live with myself and how to deal. Yeah, with and, and that's what I, I want to talk about today in no way. Uh, what I'm going to talk about next is, is it meant to minimize, mm. you know, the seriousness of it and the challenges uh, of as a kid and going through school and everything. But what it, uh, you know, what it is meant to do is kind of, sh there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and, you know, before I jump into this, I, I, I want to thank a couple of friends of mine, Rodrigo and Tonya Marcus for this idea, because they've got an ADHD kid. I have one and I'm always talking and putting my spin and framing it as like, Hey, these struggles that they faced as kids, they're going to be great adults. And let me tell you why. And I would share my experience and they encouraged me, Hey, you should do a topic, you know, this and talk about it on the small business show. So I, I said, yeah, great. let's do it. Yep. And when I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to do all this research and everything. And, um, and then I realized, you know what? I've been doing this research myself for over 30 years. So what, what I want to talk about today is, is based on my hands-on experience. Your mileage may vary, yep. but it has, you know, worked for me. Um, and, and let's, so let's jump in, you know, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? Difficulty paying attention over a longer time frame, hyperactive, jumping around, you're impulsive. And then this word disorder, you know, I hope to convince you by the end of the show that it's really... It, they may be called a disorder, but it also can be an opportunity. And, and I, think, I think that's a great framing of it. Yeah. I, I, I think depending on the severity to which Absolutely. one experiences it might inform that, th that pendulum too. So correct. Yeah. And getting through, it, and this is, you know, it's very tough as you know, if you've got a kid or you went through it, yeah. how, you know how hard it is. And, you know, my son went through it and I always just tried to frame things. I know this is difficult. I know it's so hard. We're going to get through it together, but I guarantee you all these skills you're learning, which I'm, I want to talk about next are going to help you as an adult to succeed. And I'm, I, I have to believe that that constant framing of it, that these challenges are going to help form you into a stronger adult it helped him, you know, the, the whole concept of things are going to be better. Yeah. It's not always going to be that you're sitting in a classroom trying to learn in a method that maybe doesn't work for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I, I would say there's three key things for me in, in, in my experience is that, you know, ADHD kids, they learn to embrace failure and mistakes way earlier than the, an average person does. They know about perseverance because it, they have to just constantly grind it out. And they've learned early on how to kind of adopt a system of failing over and over until you succeed. And, and I don't think that comes along, you know, later to a lot of people, you know, they've already kind of burst through this wall that failure is just a part of it. And, you know, you're not going to run into this thing later in life as you go out and quote, you know, in the real world. And I think yeah. that's really valuable. They, they've they kind of got this, they've, they've learned, or hopefully someone is helping them, uh, it, your parent in school or, you know, the therapist or something that's okay, great. You have, you struggle. You're going to have to work twice as hard. You're going to have to take twice as long. Right. You're going to have to add more time. You can't just show up and make it work because you have these challenges. And that's really powerful that, you know, subconsciously they learn to embrace when, failure. When you, yeah. When mistakes. you learn that you can, it, you know, like, like, um, 
like John Platt was saying, right? Special things are supposed to be hard. Okay. Well, absolutely. Now you've learned the value of that, or you have the opportunity to learn the value of that hard work, even though it yeah. sucks when you start. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it does. It does suck. And the other thing I think that, you know, those of us, us with uh, ADHD, we're less intimidated by fear. We grew up with fear, right? Fear of failing in class, I mean, school, you know, fear of having to get up in front of anybody, the fear, of, you know, being afraid, thinking we weren't as smart as the other kids, yep. but we just had a different way of learning fear of not being successful as adults. I mean, I can imagine, or I can remember just still being in college going, gosh, how am I going to make this work, man? You know, I just don't have this skill set that everybody else seems to have. Yeah. So once you start to get a little foundation under you that, oh, okay. And you know, my son's in college now and I always remind him, I'm like, I hope you're figuring this out at how smart you really are because, you know, I know it's a struggle in class, but look at all the decisions and things you're learning about right now, getting a house with all your buddies, working the logistics, signing a lease, doing all these create these things that that's a very important skill set beyond just sitting in a classroom. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and then the, the last thing is I, I kind of combination of both of these kids with AG, ADHD, they're just used to fighting through difficulty. They're kind of, they get this early training and I think it can, if you, if it's framed right and nurtured in the right way, it can kind of put them ahead of other kids that maybe haven't had significant challenges. And, and, you know, these folks are ready right out of the gate to take on some, some bigger things. And, uh, I think it's important. I think it's a great way to try to frame it with all the other systems and help you're putting in place. If you're helping a kid that has it is to continually remind them how great their life is going to be as an adult. Cause you're, you're kind of programming them. You ha well, you have to that's the thing. And I, I want to, I know there's people banging on their steering wheels. I'm sure there is right yeah. now. Well, and, and I, some subset of you are saying, this isn't true for everybody. We don't all it's not. make it through. That's correct. But it, it, so this is very, I, I know you've generalized the the phrasing of this, but it, like you said at the beginning, this is very much, you know, the experience that you have had. My personal experience. Right. You got it. And and I, mine has been similar, not exactly the same, but, but similar in that I've learned how to address challenges. But I have some some friends and uh, and colleagues that, also suffer from something that I would as a non-professional say is similar and did right. not learn how to figure this out as, and did not learn how to rise up and push against these challenges as a kid. And this was not, this was an opportunity for them, but it was an opportunity that they were not able to capitalize on and, and it has hurt them greatly. So, sure. I, I, you know, I, it is not a universal truth, uh, Absolutely. Ra rather, it is and, and like, like you said; it's an opportunity. But we also I think say it's something well, failure, mistakes are opportunities too. You have to correct. You have to you have to learn to frame that in your head, and it's a really hard thing unless you've seen the other side of it, and you don't get to see the other side until you frame a mistake as an opportunity, leverage it, and say, "Whoa, wait a minute! Look what happened! Like we pushed right. through." Like, and, and that's I a think that powerful thing. Yeah, what I'm suggesting is that we could, there's something on top of everything else we're doing to help these younger people that have these various levels of, you know, this, this uh, issue is, you know, kind of bolting on and making sure we're keeping this, this proper framework. Uh, it, it, it's something else we can do to help them succeed, yes. help them get through it and let them know it's not always going to be this way. And there's, there's, there's things you can do to to help yourself succeed when you have this uh, this situation, and I, and I don't want to okay. talk about some of those. Well, right yeah. Now. So, as a business owner, what are some of the things for you that you feel like ADHD has empowered you, or skills that you have that yeah. va that that you find valuable as a business owner that you yeah, can trace back to ADHD? Yeah. Yeah. So, if we're talking about you know this uh attention deficit and not being able to maybe keep you know focused on one thing very long well in my life that's allowed me to take in a lot more data quickly than i think someone that doesn't have this yeah. uh i have i think a wider bandwidth and i get to i can make decisions faster with a limited amount of data it, it, it has helped me make more decisions that are that have been essential in being successful now 
tons of those decisions have been wrong. There's no doubt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I talk about all the time, you know, I sure. always have made, you know, wrong decisions, but I've made enough of them that there's been enough that's worked out right to, to make all the difference. And I wasn't afraid to make decisions with a limited set of data. You, you have to, as a small business, if you just continue to dig and dig and you want everything to be safe and secure, I, I, I just don't know how to make that work. Well, I mean, it's that analysis paralysis thing, right? Like where Correct. you say you can, as an excuse, use, well, I don't have enough data. I, I, I need more. I need to, you know, I need to know more before I can make this decision, obviously. And well, you yes. can, you In can a make perfect world. Yeah. Right. Like and you can make that argument to you, to anyone, including to yourself. Uh, and I've, I've certainly been guilty of that at times, but yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's interesting that you attribute your ability, your willingness to make quick decisions to ADHD. That, that is not something I would have drawn a parallel with. Um, but yeah, but and it, I think it's, yeah, it, it, it also, uh, along a similar lines, having that, it's allowed me to move quickly from, from one task to another sure. without being so worried about finishing <laughs> one task before I jumped into another. That's and definitely ADHD in my experience. Abso yeah, absolutely. And I do it all day, but what, what I've, this helps me in the long run to get more things done. It, now there's no doubt it can also kill your productivity. If you're not careful, yeah. you have to use tools to be sure you swing back to get those other tasks done. And I'm going to talk about some of these tools in a few minutes, okay. but yeah. being able to jump around, it also allows me to keep myself motivated. So if I'm drudging through some project, I'm not really thrilled about, but I have to get done. I can jump, take a little break, jump into something else, come back. But it also allows me to cross pollinate projects and businesses and tasks with information and knowledge from other tasks and apply them to something that you may not even have thought that would be relevant on one task. You can apply it to something else. So this that's is, re that's really helped me. This is interesting. The The language that you're using is it, meaning this, your experience with ADHD allows me to do these things. It would be very like someone else that, that had exactly the same brain chemistry, whatever it is, could, could say this, this, uh, keeps me from being able to finish anything. It keeps me all like, how you frame it. It's all how you frame it. And I, I think that there's, again, some of that framing is supported by your own experience, but some of it is, as you often say, the story you tell yourself about where the end is. And, and then you pave a path to get there. And I wonder if that is perhaps the thing that you learned from ADHD, like, wait a minute, I'm going to scatter everything all over the place and I'm not going to be successful. And so I need to decide on an end point and know that I can keep that in focus, even while I'm sort of meandering this path there, at least the path is going somewhere. And I wonder if that's part of this Maybe. too. I don't know. I yeah, mean, here yeah. I am, you know, the, the I, armchair I, I, psychologist. A, yeah, um, that's yeah. right. Business therapy. But <laughs> business I, therapy. I, I am a firm believer that, you, you know, we talk about story, a story all the time and yeah. that you as, as, as business owners have the opportunity to write our own story. It's a, it's just a huge opportunity in your life. And, you know, you, if you just go search story up at businessshow.co, we, we've just talked about it over the years many times. And in some ways, you could also say that allows you to create your own reality. Totally. Uh, it has for me. Uh, and again, no, in no way am I minimizing anybody else's experience. I'm just sharing with you mine. Yeah, no. And, and I'm just trying to dissect this because I mean, we all have different experiences, but I know that you and I are both this, you know, whatever it is, hyperactive ADHD. We definitely share this, this kind of thing, but we've both in different ways figured out what I like to say how to live with ourselves, right? How yeah, to be successful. A system. We've, yeah. we've developed a system, Correct. you know, and being able to jump from task to task as a business owner has also allowed me to jump from department to department, crisis to crisis, go in, offer solutions, maybe with limited knowledge, because I don't know what's going on, but maybe bring a fresh perspective to it. Uh, 
to be able to offer encouragement, constructive criticism without having to wait for things to get resolved. I don't need to know. I could just dip in, in, in like, you know, with tech restore, I could dip into the tech department and go, why don't you guys try this? And then I would just walk out the door. So I don't have a need for closure on a lot of stuff. And I do attribute that to my squirrel mentality yeah. that allows me to quickly shift <laughs> into another direction. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, so that that's that's the way I look at it. I also know that as a business owner, I I'm a better is this a word better delegator? I yeah. delegate often more frequent because it's easy for me to just kind of quickly look at something and go, oh, you know, Paul should do that. Why don't you send this to you know have him take care of this? Have to and I and I don't need to follow up on it because I've got 10 other yeah. or 20 other tasks going on that I'm dipping in and out of. And it is a bit chaotic, but it over time, I've developed the, the, it, this system that works for me because I do get things done, obviously. Sure, obviously, um, right. You know, and uh, so as I get like, okay, I'm going to write a book. Well, you know, I can't sit down and just force myself to write 230 pages. I will go insane. But I can write a blog post every few days that eventually becomes a book after 10 months. Yep. So that's how I, how, how I manage it. No, that the way. compartmentalization, the delegator thing makes sense to me. Although I would have explained it for a very different reason, but related to the same thing. I get, I find myself getting very frustrated if I have too many balls in the air, right? Like I, oh, I have yeah, my sure. systems and I, I know how to track things, but if suddenly there's a new thing that comes in, right. And it's like, Oh, I no, 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 no. I will delegate that out very, very quickly without spending a lot of time investing myself in the way to solve it. Right. Like it's yeah. like, yeah, that's no, right. I don't want this frustration on. I, I don't want this on my plate because it will frustrate me. Not that it is a frustration, but adding it to my plate would frustrate me. So I will not pay, you know, I will not dig yeah, into it. Would look at it. I'll just be like, no, no, no. Paul does it, you know, and then yeah. I'm, I'm off and I, I haven't invested into it so I can keep my headspace less cluttered if, if that's a better way to do it. Yeah. So, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And then, you know, the whole hyperactivity part, there's no doubt. Uh, but I think, you know, the best leaders have an, their energy kind of overflows and attracts followers. You know, it's hyperactive. It's kind of an elevated form of mm. action. And we talk about that on the show over and over and over about how we think small, the word, the term small business should be a verb because it takes action to be successful, not sitting around talking about ideas over and over and over, getting out and getting something done. And, you know, you're the cheerleader, you're the champion of your business in that energy that overflows from you and that excitement about it helps energize others. Those are people that you bring into your team and help yeah. run your business and help you create the charmed life that we talk about on the show all the time. Yeah. No, it and, makes and I, I think the yeah. other, the other part of having that, that hyper energy, it, you need that to help carry you through the many failures and low times that you will endure to become successful, either as a business owner or just successful in life. Right. Uh, I think having that energy can propel you over those low spots because you know, you just, you just powering through them and you've learned that over the, over the years uh, you just have, you have to keep moving. Lastly, being impulsive. If I wasn't impulsive, I would have never started my first business. Oh, totally. You know, I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. If you talk about, I think about, about it too much. You won't do yes. it. Like all those, do it. we talk about all those voices that, you know, come to you and say, Oh, you won't be able to like do that. And I don't mean voices in your head, although those could be there too. I mean, like <laughs> right. truly other people, when you share your ideas, like, Oh, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. If you spend too much time thinking, you'll you'll begin to agree with that. Like you will That's find right. the holes for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and that impulsiveness, it, it it allows you also to say yes more, and that leads you to to I think it brings you more opportunities. So yeah. you're creating your own reality by how you frame what could be thought of as a disorder. It's actually you might be able to think about it as an opportunity but a lot of it's how you frame it and i you know it, 
it's I think it's makes it makes all the difference on how what that like you said, Dave, the story that you're telling the story. yourself. Well, you 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 wrote something in the the notes that I don't think you said yet, and that maybe you did that you know you see ADHD as one of your superpowers. And that's a great story to tell yourself because that yeah. is empowering. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just so bad at so many other things, but I know that, you know, juggling lots of things, making decisions based on limited information, jumping from task to task. I'm good at that. And it, and it, you know, I've tried to use that to, uh, to my benefit. Yeah, for and, sure. You know, and hopefully the benefit of other people as well. All right. So you mentioned um, that there, there were some tools, some tricks of the trade. Yeah. So as it stuff were. that I use to, to help me deal with the downside of this, you know, uh, to manage my, you know, ADHD issues. It, one of the number one things is some sort of reminder app, you know, my phone and the reminders app, it, it was a game changer uh, when they first came along and I'm all day long. I'm constantly, setting reminders for myself. I, oh, cause and, it pops into my head, right? Yeah, no. And my advice for certainly, again, I know this works for you and it works for me. My guess is that this is something that might be, uh, somewhat universal for people with ADHD. Keep your reminders app, whatever it is, your oh, system, absolutely. keep it simple. The yes. getting, the, the getting things done thing I, like that is now a, a system I need to spend time managing if I'm going to use that. Yeah. And that it's became an extra frustration for me. It's like, no, it's just the list, one list. Yeah. It's fine. Yep. It's, it's, yep. it's, I, yeah, I have, you I'm want one to do person. It. It's one yep. list. That's it. And yep. you know, we did a whole show about this concept of the to did list. Totally. And that's what I do. I set reminders throughout the day. Hey, at one o'clock do this at three o'clock do that, because I know I'm going to jump into 20 other things in between and I'll forget. But at the end of the day, I can go back and go, what did I get done? And I create this to did list. So when I walk into my desk tomorrow morning and I look down, I go, wow, I got a lot done yesterday versus going, I don't, what did, what did I, I do? What did yesterday? I get finished? What yeah. did I do? So again, you're just kind of programming yourself. Um, same with calendars. You know, you have to jump into your calendar each day to keep track of kind of that wide bandwidth, longer term, uh, you know, things that are going on for, you know, things are going to happen on a specific day and time. You just have to do it. I would fall apart. I, um, I find with my calendar, I say that I live and die by my calendar. And one thing that I get, I get to do with my calendar again, here's the framing of this is I get to program what future me will do on any given day. If I, I put it. something on my calendar and to, like, it's, let's say it's something I don't want to do today. Fine. I put it on the calendar for tomorrow or whatever, Friday. It doesn't matter. Once I get to it on Friday, it's like, well, it's on the calendar. Now I have time to do it. And so I do yeah. it. And that's a very powerful thing. Like, you know, programming future you that for me with like I that, love that phrasing, yeah, that that's alone great. might be the biggest thing I've ever done to, to, to manage my, you know, hyperactive nature is, is yeah. exactly that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And uh, another thing, one of my, you know, good friends and a very successful, uh, you know, business owner told me one time, hire an assistant and double your income. Well, that's, that's the sales. That, I mean, that's the sales it, mantra, right? right? Yep. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you're totally, you're right. And, you know, get an assistant. I mean, maybe it's virtual or whatever it is, but get somebody to help follow along and pick up the pieces as you kind of, okay, I guess some that, you know, you need somebody to delegate to, right? Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, and we've talked about this on the show, you know, over and over too, surround yourself with people that offset your defects or deficits, not defects, deficits. Uh, you need, you need deep thinkers. You need long-term strategic planners and you need people that will keep you accountable. At least I do. So let me rephrase that. I need those people. I need people that, uh, you know, I have to show up. I have to do this. I have to finish certain things. I'm accountable to this person. And I need people that can think through in, on a much longer scale than I can. Yeah. I can drive it with my energy and, you know, jump in, make decisions and my impulsiveness, but having somebody there to help you is I think critically important in your business and, and in your, it's your true. success as well. It's true. Could and, your, and you know, your spouse, <laughs> I say this and Shannon and I have partnered successfully on, on several ventures, but hiring or, or bringing on a partner that, that is that person can be great. Now you and I do approach things differently and we really have complimented each other. This is not, this is sort of the one thing that we have in common is, is this, you know, crazy energy, but you know, it's, yeah. it's worked out. So 
for yeah, the most part. Yeah, it's worked good. So, you know, I, th- for me, uh, you know, this ADHD type thing that I have going on, I, I really don't think of it as a disorder. I, I think of it, it's, it's become an opportunity f- for me to lead an uncommon life, you know, and to build success once you get through the struggles of, you know, when you're younger and I had those same struggles, I was terrible in school and just never, you know, and, and I really, it was points of my life when I was just a kid that thought, man, I'm just never going to amount to anything. How am I going to do what all these super smart people yeah. obviously know how to do that? I don't know, but that just was not the case because once I got into college and started making quick decisions and building my first business, I realized, Hey, you know, the, these guys are smart, no doubt, but it's not like they have some secret knowledge. No, you know, I, th- I just have a different kind of knowledge. I think both Mark Cuban and Steve Jobs in their own ways have said some version of that. Like, you know, these people that are super successful, they're no different than you or me. And, right. and, and a lot of people have said, you know, they all put their pants on one leg at a time. Like, but, but it really is worth thinking through that, that like, you know, it's not, they're not any different. They just are willing to, to take, to make decisions. They're willing to take some risks, obviously, but, um, but that's, you know, they're the same. And, and I think a lot of it is in your framing and we're raised to frame things certain ways, Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, just as a byproduct of, you know, what our parents do for a living or did for a living, you know, whatever it is. I mean, you're just, you're sort of handed this, this picture of what the world looks like and you can choose to, to repaint that picture or, alter it or whatever it is. And, and, and part of this is exactly that you just kind of got to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can help if, if you know somebody that's struggling with these issues and you're, you're getting them connected with the help they need and you're learning how to kind of create a system for them that works, you know, I would suggest you add this framework to it about, Hey, we're going to get you through these things. And, and when you get older in life, there's, there's a certain, uh, strengths that you have that are going to be great for you, you know, so they, so, so we have something to look forward to when you get older, not like, Hey, you know what? You're not going to be in high school your whole life. It's not going to be such a struggle for you. Uh, (laughs) when you get out and you have to go work and you're a salesperson, you may be the most persistent dogged, you know, guy that there or woman that makes, uh, you know, tons of money because you're just, you don't give up or whatever. Yeah. But there's, there's lots of opportunities within the, uh, you know, this, this realm that we have. Um, and we'd love to hear your story. You know, if you've got, if you think I'm totally wrong, please tell me feedback at businessshow.co or tell me how you've managed, uh, you know, your life. If you have, you know, one of these, uh, issues, hyperactivity, attention deficit, you know, whatever you want to call it, or if you're struggling with a young person and you have tips, uh, we'd love to hear from you feedback at businessshow.co. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great, man. It's it's good to frame this. It's it's fascinating to hear your like your views and and your your interpretations of the path, right? And and I fully am aware that my interpretations of the path are things I have told myself in reverse, right? Like, yeah, no problem. of course you have it's the benefit a, of looking back, right? Correct. That's right. And so, <laughs> but, but that's part of the deal is, is yeah. doing that and get that, you know, we could probably do a whole other show on that is a skill in and of itself is, you know, reframing the past so that you fuel yourself for the future. And that's a huge part of what, what we're talking about here for sure. That's yeah. a great topic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, if you have any other ideas for topics, like he said, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear that you think we're wrong. We'd love to hear. I mean, if you think we're right, that's great, too. But it's sometimes it's even more fun if uh, if you think we're wrong. So keep living that charmed life. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week.